Hey, Faith Community, we're back here. Today we're in Luke chapter 11. Uh, yesterday, Curtis and I were talking about Luke chapter 10, and we wanted to go back a little bit, uh, hit on on Luke 10, 13. And, and here, Jesus is is pronouncing some woes on some people. Yeah. And, and, and imagine being on the receiving end of that. It's, you don't want that. It's not good. So, you know, what, what can we learn from Jesus in his... his woes to, to these people. Yeah, so uh, this is going to kind of flow into uh, Luke 11, what you're going to talk about, but woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. These are two towns in, in, in northern Galilee. For if the miracles that were done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon, Tyre and Sidon are Greek Gentile uh, uh, places, okay? They would have repented long ago sitting in sackcloth and ashes, but it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, again, north, lots of miracles there. Will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens uh, to uh, you listens to me. Whoever rejects me rejects uh, you uh, and the one who sent me. So the issue is this, and this is important for us as as church members. I mean, you grew up in the church. Yeah. I grew up in the church. Essentially what he's saying is, is you're going to be held accountable because of all of the miracles that were done in you and you didn't repent, dude, if, if even a fraction of these had been done in Tyre and Sidon, sackcloth and ashes. It's kind of that Nineveh, you know, kind of reality. Right. Uh, and what we need to understand as, as believers is, especially if you've grown up in the church, whoo-wee, you're going to be held accountable for every sermon you sat under. For every time you met with Jason, it's almost like scary, dangerous right, to grow right. up in the church. Uh, in fact, there's a really, really good book um, that that Jason has given out to some people, and um, I've read as well. It's called Growing Up Christian, and I think it's a really powerful book because it's like dangerous to grow up Christian. Yeah, but that's why hypocritical living is 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 so scary because in order to be a hypocrite, you have to know. Yeah, yeah, you have to know, and so that gets us into uh, Luke chapter eleven where. Man, these people know. So tell us a little bit about a hypocritical living. Why? Why is this so dangerous uh, of a place to be? Yeah, I think I think as as we see Jesus in his life on Earth, we see that he has, uh, you know, almost in his his scope of attack the whole, the whole time he's here is is the religious leaders, hmm. and these are people who grew up under God's word. They studied it. They memorized. You know the vast majority yeah. of of these these texts and they talk about it they debate it debate it they yeah. discuss it they yeah. it's it's their whole lives and yet they're not living the way that God's word tells them to live and that's the Pharisees and yeah. we being people who've grown up inside of church like there's always that warning like don't be a Pharisee mm. don't be a Pharisee don't mm. be a Pharisee because of passages like this in, yeah. in Luke 11 you know 37 Jesus just you know attacks them going yeah. after them you're clean on the outside uh, but inside you're full of greed and evil you're mm. a fool um, you are you know a, a, you know like you're you're you look nice yeah. on the outside yeah. inside it's it's rotten and it's it's disgusting but isn't that uh isn't that what we like we want people just to view the outside yeah i mean we do that whether it's through giving or through serving or through smiling or we come to church our life is a mess how you doing oh we're doing great yeah. right and because we are people pleasers um we want we want to justify ourselves, like yesterday's passage. We want to justify ourselves. Why do? You, why is the? Why is this such a, a scary thing for like you and me? I mean, pastors. Yeah. The the, the Pharisees were like master seminary students. Right. You know, it's not like <laughs> the lay person. This is like the cream of the crop. You know, yeah. these are people who know they know better. I think it's scary for us because the Pharisees were so convinced that their way was right. Hmm. Um, and they're completely blind to hmm. to their reality, and I think that that sort of once we settle, right? There's there's probably some time in our life where we you know go searching and exploring, yeah. and then yeah. we we sort of become who we are. Yeah. And a lot of that happens in junior high through college mm -hmm. age, and and then it becomes a really really difficult to commit to change otherwise. Them. <laughs> and so the Pharisees have gone through that hmm. that. And they've, you know, latched on to this and said, okay, mm. our way is right. And even even if the Son of God were to come us and tell us differently, we're not changing. Yeah. And like that's pretty fixed. That's, that's scary. <laughs> that's scary. And and we we gravitate towards teaching that 
pats us on the back mm-hmm. rather than slaps mm-hmm. us in the face. Mm-hmm. The justify yeah. yourself kind and of it's, stuff. And, and I think the Pharisees, you know, were pointing at other groups of people. Yeah. And we like to point, like, don't look at my sin. Yeah. Look at, you're sitting yeah. with a prostitute. You're yeah. sitting with a tax collector. Yeah. And so the scary thing is this, I might identify, we all want to be Peter and John. Yeah. I might identify more with the Pharisee yeah. through through different stages of yeah. my life. Yeah, that word hypocrite, um, it really came came about, uh, it's this Greek word that is two, two-faced. And actually wasn't a, a bad word. It was like when we go to a ball, you put mm, on the mask the and mask. I'm a lion. Yeah. And then I'm not a lion. I'm a, it just simply, it's it's you you are being someone you're not actually and then it, as you move along, it, it got a negative connotation because people were two-faced yeah. and that kind of stuff. And these Pharisees, they're, they're two-faced. Yeah, they, they definitely are. And, and I think, you know, as, as much as we, you know, talk about, you know, don't be a Pharisee, don't be a Pharisee, don't be a Pharisee, what does that mean? Like, mm-hmm. what, what, are, what are some practical steps that we could take to, to not be a Pharisee? Yeah, uh, I think a little bit yesterday, I'd be a doer of the word and not a hearer alone. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things the Pharisees really struggle with is it says, and they think they find salvation in the scripture. Like scripture is there to give light. You don't find salvation in scripture. You found salvation in Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Allow the word of God to keep you on the right railroad track, right? That's what the law is there for, is to demonstrate that you can't the Pharisees were using the law to to beat people up and to say you can. Yeah. And the law is not there. It's just a school teacher. It's just a it's a tutor taking uh, of that child from one per place to to actual school. And on that way, they're they're teaching uh, real life stuff. That's what that 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 passage that Paul talks about is is going after. And the Pharisees, they weren't using the law in, improperly. Right. And the Pharisees were simply arrogant. Yeah. Be be a be a person who's willing to say you're wrong. Yeah. It's a real like think about all the people in your life who've never said they're wrong and how hard it is to to follow them. Right. Whether right. it's dad, dads, huh? <laughs> dads, you you need to say you're wrong. When you're wrong, you need to apologize. Pastors, right? You you got to you make yourself where you're un you, you can't follow a person. And so a huge part of not being a hypocrite of not being a Pharisee is self-evaluation. Yeah. Paul says this at Timothy, examine yourself to see whether you're in your faith. Yeah, and we like to examine everyone else. Oh, we do, don't we? <laughs> right? It's it's easy for me to to look at my kids and tell them when they're wrong. Yeah. Right? To look at, you know, my coworkers and mm. tell when, when they're wrong mm. or to, you know, to even tell other people. Like, yeah. you know, start gossip and slander and, you know, look at them, look at them. And it, not being a Pharisee really begins with us taking the focus off of others and, and looking at ourselves. Yeah. Um, I also think uh, that, that not being a Pharisee, um, let me open, open my notes here, uh, is, is about extending grace and mm. forgiveness. Like sort of, sort of what you, you know, talked about that the Pharisee likes to bring the law yeah. and that's important, yeah. right? So extending grace and forgiveness does not mean ignoring sin it means graciously handling sin yeah. both in both in yeah. in yourself and in others yeah and you do that you do that by not being the judge yeah you do that by understanding there's one judge <clears throat> and one lawgiver it says in James but the pharisee is the judge like they view that it's you know i'm judge jury and uh and executioner, executioner. yeah that that phrase but you're not and and one of the things um in in christian life like for you and me right I'm not your parent. Right. As believers, we're not, we have one father. It's yeah. not you and it's not me. <laughs> we're siblings. And then our job is to actually just persuade one another. Yeah. Can I convince you, right? Matthew 18, if I see you in sin, can I persuade you? Can I convince you? Can I win you over yep. in the most small possible way? So not everybody knows to protect your reputation. And if I win you over, Done. good to go. Done. Yeah. I think, I think the world especially is, is Christianity seems to be drifting towards liberalism to mm. not be a Pharisee mm. is it's okay. Yeah. You know, you were born this, you right. were born this way. Right. You have right. these things. I don't want to be a Pharisee and, and judge you. Yeah. I don't want to be a Pharisee and hurt you. Right. I don't want to. And, and we, they're almost using, they're, they're twisting God's yeah. word. Just 100%. What, what Satan loves to do. Yep. 
and trying to it gives them excuse to justify yeah, themselves exactly exactly and so what how can we make sure or what are some some safeguards we could put in place to make sure that okay when i i don't i don't swing too far towards towards grace and forgiveness that i'm actually hurting the person yeah the word yeah <laughs> Re- read the bible you know the people that say that stuff aren't reading the bible yeah. because you see very very clearly in the bible you who are spiritual, go. It's a just correct definition of love. Right. Like a correct definition of love is a good parent. We all know this. Like if the parent sees their kid running across the street, I don't care what you do, you kick them. You trip. <laughs> like it doesn't matter what you do because you know the, the big result is your job is to protect that child. Same thing for us as brothers and sisters in Christ. It's like our job is to persuade and protect, yeah. right? So, so if I see you going down a wrong direction, I can't parent you, but I for sure can try and grab you. Right. Now you can get ticked off at me. You can say I'm a Pharisee. You can say this, that, but I've noticed this, that people, when I have hard, if I ever have a conversation, I start off, you know, that I love you, <laughs> right? But, Buckle but up. that, that's the, like the reason, right? The reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is not to get you in trouble is not to be a, a jerk. It's it's because I love you. I think that's different between a Pharisee and, and someone else. It's the it's the method. It's the why right. that right. I'm doing this. Why are we having this conversation? Not because I want to prove you wrong or be better than you, but I actually love you. Yeah, and then and then to to be able to point them towards God's forgiveness, yeah. remind them of the grace where the Pharisee would say, "You're not doing it right," and yeah. start doing it right. Yeah, and check these boxes, do these things, yeah. and yet. Jesus comes in and says, look, like when we go to correct somebody, let's make sure we point them towards forgiveness and remind them of, of God's grace. Yeah. And so the, the kind of the final thought with that, so, so evaluate, evaluate yourself. Are you being a Pharisee or not? And I think here's, here's a great, do people actually change after mm. your interaction with them? Yeah. Right. Because the person who comes down really hard, they're not actually getting, it's woe, woe to you. Yeah. You, you won't even <laughs> lift up the thing on your own. You're, you're becoming, making them twice the sons of hell, right? If, you, if people can hear your heart and, and really feel and experience that, cry with them, weep with those who weep, mourn yeah. with those who mourn. Like, have you ever, because a Pharisee doesn't do that. It just lays more on them, lays more on them. Is there any sort of gracious change? Not perfection, not just, you know, turn 180. That doesn't always happen. But is there any sense that that person says, man, thank you, Jason. Yeah. Like that was a hard conversation, <laughs> but like, I know that you love me and I, and I truly feel that. Right. I think that's a great method to kind of evaluate. Am I being a Pharisee when I'm doing this or do I truly am being a brother or a yeah. sister for Christ? Yep. And I think those, those answers take a little bit of time mm-hmm. and, you know, we, it reminds us that it's it's not always about us, but yeah. God does use us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. We'll be back with you real soon. God bless. Bye.